the hour of convening having arrived, all members of the House will please report to the floor of the House and the gallery in room 341 and take your assigned seats. All members will report to their assigned seats. The clerk will ring the bell. about to have the morning roll call. All members present will please vote green to signify their presence in the chamber and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday. It's going to be a long day, though. So, um, Settle in, and uh, we're going to get some work done today before we go home late today. Um, we will begin our day with scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will pledge allegiance to the flag of our country. Our chaplain this morning will be introduced by the gentleman from the 146th House District, Chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Chairman Shaw Blackman. Chairman Blackman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and fellow members. Um, I have the pleasure today of introducing a, a friend and a real blessing to Middle Georgia, Pastor Levi Rozier. He and his wife uh, have created the ministry at Harvest Builders Worship Center in, uh, in Warner Robins. They uh, are on a quest of putting together an army of builders and believers and equipping them to build their communities and homes and and so much more, and um, I just tell you, he has has really been a uh, a great leader, a, a great healing presence during the past year with COVID and everything, and and a true blessing he and his wife um, to our community, and it's it's real exciting for me to be able to bring him for you this morning. Um, without further ado, I uh, present to you, and it's my honor, uh, Pastor Levi Rozier. Good morning. Thank you, uh, Speaker of the House and Re uh, Representative Shaw, for all the venerated guests, all of you for allowing us the members in the House today. Such an honor to be here as I stand as a priest, as a citizen, um, and friend in this illustrious space today. This is such a powerful moment for me and for family, for Georgia as a whole. Georgia has been such a vital part of our country for years and years to come and in this moment right now. I, I spoke a message of, well, a few Sundays ago at our church, especially during the Black History Month, celebrating and, and acknowledging it about um, say something lest you forget. Say something lest you forget. Taking that narrative from the scripture and you know, the Bible said let the redeemed Lord say something. Now I use that to equate that to now to a place where we stand where I must obey lest I forget. My, my saying something calls me to remind me where I come from, where I'm involved in, why it's so vital what I'm in. My obedience also speaks to that also. The, the, the great Charles Wesley and now part of our 
um, African American churches now in present our Baptist um, construct um, call a, song, a, a hymn called the charge to keep I have. The thing about all of us, we have a charge. I have a charge who, for, 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 my, for my congregation. You have a charge for our citizen. We have a charge in Georgia to bring the good toward people the best that we ha know how and as we, we must do. Deuteronomy 6, 12 says this, as God had, had allowed his people to come out of a hard place, he told Moses to remind his people of this one thing. He said, beware lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. And God put them in a, in, a, in, a, in a position where he brought you out, but we as human beings, if we're not careful, we tend to forget. So God created stuff like Sunday. He created stuff like the Sabbath. He created stuff like the feast to remind us not to forget. If we didn't gather, if you didn't gather here at the house, if you didn't gather as a group, we tend to forget um, some of the things God has done for us. There was a guy in the, in the Bible named Saul who was a king who God had allowed to take position of leadership. He had a charge to keep. He had a mission to do. And there are times where we want to do for God, be on God's uh, platform, and then if we're not careful, we inculcate my charge with my own agenda. So Paul in, in, in 1 Samuel 5, 15, 18, I got five minutes and I got three minutes, so I'm a preacher, so I won't, I won't try to go into this text as I should. But, the, but just a bite drop of that text, Paul saw become the king because they liked them. They wanted a king. Saul become king. Samuel is a prophet. Samuel, God tells Saul, tell, tell Saul, Saul, I need you to go take these certain people out. Don't buy nothing. Don't take nothing. Here's your charge, and here's what I want you to do. Well, Saul does the opposite. He goes there. He listens to some of his, his constituents, and he begins to take back some of the goods of that land. Saul comes back, and then Samuel walks up because we all need somebody to check us every now and then, somebody to just be accountable for, someone just to say, hey, now, I, I like you, you're the king, but that might not be the way of doing things. But Samuel was that guy. He was the prophet in the ear of Saul. He comes to Saul and says, Saul, what, did I, what is that I hear? What is that I'm hearing in my ear that, that don't sound right? Saul said, you know where the people spoke, and they, they like the good, and so I know God gave me a charge and, and a mission, but I thought it'd be best just bring back some of the good, and God would be okay because it, it, it looked good on paper. He said, well, I know, but that was not your mission. That was not your charge. Your charge was to go destroy the land and come back and then celebrate God. Yeah, I like what, what Samuel said. He said, Paul, Saul, let me tell you something. Obedience is better than sacrifice. My obedience, he said, oh, I need you to obey lest you forget. Continue to work out your charge and your mission that I have assigned you to. And just because you inculcate your vision, your plan, your thoughts, your idea, your concept, it does not negate the charge that you and I have as citizens, you and I have as leaders to still carry out the, the charge and the mission that God has assigned all of us. And I love, I love how Charles Wesley, and now the first time I heard this, heard this, 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 this hymn was not by Charles Wesley. The first time I heard this hymn, I was at my grandfather's church in Montrose, Georgia, at, 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 at Massachusetts Baptist Church. And at that time, as a young boy, I had no idea what they were singing until I got older and realized my own charge. He said, he said, he said, the charge to keep I have. He said, God to glorify. Listen, those things I have to take on, my charge, my mission. And that's what I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging all of us as constituents, as Georgians, to take on our charge, take on our responsibility. Every time I obey, I'm telling myself, I will not forget. I will not forget. Every time I say thank you, it reminds me thus how, how far God has brought me. I encourage your heart. I encourage your mind. I encourage the spirit. I speak blessing over you to obey lest you forget. Let us all pray. Father God, today we thank you for this moment and we thank you for this space. God, it's by your omniscient presence you allow us to be here, to be a part of the great assignment on our lives. All of us got a charge. God, whether you're a representative or your mom or dad or father, a doctor, a lawyer, whatever that is, we have a charge. And God, we need help to obey. Sometimes we get it twisted, but God, we ask for your fresh oil, 
fresh grace on the members, fresh grace on the work of those who are assigned to help us carry out this charge. I speak your fresh anointing and grace over our lives this day. In Jesus' name, amen. That's it to the praise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic. Doorkeepers will unlock the doors. Chair recognizes Chairman Hogan, the Chair of the Committee on Information and Audits. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Your Committee on Information and Audits has read the journal of the previous legislative day and found it to be correct. And furthermore, Mr. Speaker, silence and smile are powerful tools. Smile is the way to solve many problems, and silence is the way to avoid many problems. Chairman Hogan, the chair of the Committee on Information and Audits, reports that the journal of the previous legislative day has been read and found to be correct. Is there any objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none in the journal is confirmed. The clerk will read the resolution establishing the order of business for the day. Mr. Burns, on the 59th, moves following be established as the order of business during the first part of the period unanimous consents. Introduction of bills and resolutions, first reading and reference files of bills and resolutions, second reading of bills and resolutions, reports of standing committees, third reading and passage of uncontested local bills and resolutions, first reading and reference of Senate bills and resolutions, morning orders. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution establishing the order of business for the day? The chair hears none, and the resolution is adopted. First reading of bills and resolutions, the clerk will read. House Bill 638 by Representative Scoggins, the 14th, Kelly, the 16th, and Campbell, the 15th. Building Title Act to Amend Chapter 14 and Title 51 of the Fisher Code of Georgia Annotated Relating to Asbestos and Silica Claims. Special Committee on Access to Civil Justice. House Bill 639 by Representative Scoggins, the 14th, Kelly, the 16th, and Campbell, the 15th. Building Title Act to Amend Title 51 of the Fisher Code of Georgia Annotated Relating to Torts. Judiciary. House Bill 640 by President Smith, the 18th, Paul, the 32nd, Ballinger, the 23rd, Jasper, the 11th, Collins, the 68th, and others. Bill be entitled Act to Amend Title 16 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated Related to Crimes and Offenses. Public Safety and Homeland Security. House Bill 641 by President Williams, the 145th, Chokas, the 138th, Earhart of the 36th. Bill be entitled Act to Amend Part 8 of Chapter 8 of Article. Article 8 of Chapter 14 of Title 44 of the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated relating to liens of hospitals and nursing homes. Judiciary. 
House Bill 642, by President Bernal, with the 77th scholar of the 76th base, more than the 63rd, a bill being titled Act to Amend, Article 2, Chapter 3, Title 6 of the Official Code of George Antetor, relating to powers of local governments. Judiciary. House Bill 643, by President Bernal, with the 77th scholar of the 76th base, more than the 63rd, bill being titled Act to Amend, Code Section 48541 of the Official Code of George Antetor, relating to property tax exemptions. Ways and Means. House Bill 644 by President Dreyer, the 59th, Wen of the 89th, Jackson, the 64th, Schofield, the 60th, Robichaux, the 48th. Bill be titled Act to Amend Chapter 3, Title 20, the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated, relating to post secondary education. Higher Education. House Bill 646 by Representative Glanton, the 75th, Jones, the 25th, Belton, the 112th, Hughley, the 136th, and Couch, the 50th. Bill be titled Act to Amend Part 4 of Article 6, Chapter 2, of Title 20. The official code of Georgia Antetor relating to financing under the Quality Basic Education Act. Higher Education. House Bill 647 by Representative of Smith, the 133rd, Smith, the 70th. Washburn, the 141st, Williams, the 145th, and Dickey, the 140th. Bill be titled an act to amend Part 1 of Article 2, Chapter 8 of Title, of title 12. The official code of Georgia Antetor relating to general provisions relative to solid waste management. Natural Resources and Environment. House Bill 648 by Representative Schofield, the 60th, Beverly, the 143rd, Robichaux, the 48th, Hutchinson, the 107th, Scott of the 76th, and others. Bill be titled an act to amend Title 30 of the Fish Code of Georgia and Taylor relating to handicapped persons. Health and Human Services. House Bill 649 by Representative Allen, the 40th, Wilkerson, the 38th, Cannon, the 58th, and McLeod, the 105th. Bill be titled an act of men, Article 1, Chapter 7, Title 31 of the Fish Code of Georgia Antetta relating to regulations, hospitals, and related institutions. Human Relations and Aging. House Bill 650 by Representative Cannon, the 58th, Lemon, the 99th, McLean, the 100th, Schofield, the 60th, Thomas, the 39th, and others. Bill be titled an act of men, Title 34 of the Fish Code of Georgia Antetta relating to labor and industrial relations. Industry and Labor. House Bill 651 by Representative Gilliard of the 162nd, and Stevens, the 164th. Bill being titled an act to amend the act authorizing the Board of Commissioners of Chatham County. Intergovernmental Coordination. House Bill 652 by Representative Ballinger, the 23rd. Bill being titled an act to amend Article 2, Chapter 11, Title 15 in the Fish Code of Georgia Antetor relating to Juvenile Court Administration. Juvenile Justice. House Resolution 236 by Representative Lotta, the 122nd, Green, the 151st. Perkle, 155th, La Hood, the 175th, and Gilliard, the 162nd. Resolution creating the House Study Committee on Safe Staffing of Nurses in Georgia. Human Relations and Aging. Senate Bill 22 by Senator Jones, the 10th, a bill being titled an act to amend the act, providing for a new Board of Commissioners for Henry County. Intergovernmental Coordination. Senate Bill 105 by Senator Strickland, the 17th, Kennedy, the 18th, Thompson, the 14th, Anderson, the 43rd, Watson, the 1st. Bill be titled an act to amend Article 1, Chapter 10 of Title 17, the Fish Code of Georgia Antetor, relating to procedure for sentencing and imposition of punishment. Judiciary non civil. Senate Bill 143 by Senator Tippins of the 37th, Dugan of the 30th, Gooch of the 51st, Miller of the 49th, and Kennedy of the 18th. Bill be titled an act to amend Part 3 of Article 8, Chapter 14, Title 44 of the Fish Code of Georgia Antetor, relating to mechanics and material men. Judiciary. Senate Bill 159 by Senator Gooch, the 51st, Miller, the 49th, Burke, the 11th, Jenner, the 47th, and Payne, the 54th. Bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 20, the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated, relating to elementary and secondary education. Education. Senate Bill 193 by Senator Mullis, the 53rd, Harper, the 7th, Harbison, the 15th, Jackson, the 2nd, Hatchet, the 4th, of the 50th, and others. Bill being titled an act to amend Chapter 5. Title 48 of the Fish Code of Georgia Annotated re relating to ad valorem taxation of property. Ways and Means. Senate Bill 211 by Senator Sumner's the 13th bill be titled an act to provide that future elections for the Office of Judge of Probate Court of Crisp County shall be nonpartisan. Intragovernmental Coordination. That completes first readers. Second reading of bills and resolutions. The clerk will read. House Bill 618 by Representative Reeves of the 34th and Scoggins of the 14th, a bill relating to execution and attestation. House Bill 19, 619 by Representative Houston of the 170th, the bill relating to Heritage Trust Program. House Bill 620 by Representative Leibert of the 33rd, Oliver of the 82nd, Estration of the 104th, Wilson of the 80th, Scoggins of the 14th, a bill relating to Guardian and Ward, Wrongful Death and Bond. House Bill 621 by Representative Wilson of the 80th, Evans of the 57th, 
Allen of the 40th and Schofield of the 60th, a bill relating to insurance, House Bill 622, by Representative Dickey of the 140th, the bill to amend an act providing a new charter for the city of Fort Valley, House Bill 623, by Representative Ridley of the 6th, Carpenter of the 4th, Tarvin of the 2nd, a bill to provide a new charter for the town of Cahutta, House Bill 624, by Representative Taylor of the 173rd Green, of the 151st, Campbell of the 171st, and Dukes of the 154th, a bill relating to number of judges of superior courts. House Bill 625 by Representative Rhodes of the 120th, Powell of the 32nd, Leverett of the 33rd, a bill to create the Tri-County Natural Gas Authority. House Bill 626 by Representative Glanton of the 75th, Bodie of the 62nd, Smyrie of the 135th, Beverly of the 143rd, Hughley of the 136th, and others, a bill relating to elementary and secondary education. House Bill 627 by Representative LaHood of the 175th, Weedower of the 119th, Lawton of the 122nd, Rhodes of the 120th, Ridley of the 6th, a bill relating to athletic trainers. House Bill 628 by Representative LaHood of the 175th, Petrie of the 166th, Cooper of the 43rd, Newton of the 123rd, Ridley of the 6th, a bill relating to Central Caregiver Registry. Six, House Bill 629 by Representative Newton of the 123rd, Hawkins of the 27th, Cooper of the 43rd, Fry of the 118th, Dempsey of the 13th, a bill relating to control of hazardous conditions, preventable disease, and metabolic disorders. House Bill 630 by Representative Beverly of the 143rd, Mitchell of the 88th, Wilkerson of the 38th, Cannon of the 58th, Baysmore of the 63rd, and others, bill relating to medical assistance, House Bill 631, by Representative Chokas of the 138th, Newton of the 123rd, Kelly of the 16th, Thompson of the 12th, Stevens of the 164th, and others, a bill relating to the powers and duties of the Georgia Crime Information Center. House Bill 632, by Representative Baysmore of the 63rd, Bruce of the 61st, Metz of the 55th, Bodie of the 62nd, Jackson of the 64th, a bill relating to use of speed detection devices and red light cameras. House Bill 633 by Representative Baysmore of the 63rd, Beverly of the 143rd, Williams of the 168th, Meyer of the 135th, Mitchell of the 88th, and others. A bill relating to kidnapping, false imprisonment, and related offenses. House Bill 634 by Representative Mathis of the 144th, a bill to provide that the judge of the probate court of Wilkinson County shall serve as the chief magistrate of the magistrate court of Wilkinson County. House Bill 636 by Representative Vody of the 62nd, Hughley of the 136th, Bernal of the 77th, Davis of the 87th, Shannon of the 84th, and others, a bill relating to general provisions relative to labor and industrial relations. House Bill 637 by Representative Fry of the 118th, Neal of the 74th, McLaurin of the 51st, Douglas of the 78th, Howard of the 124th, a bill relating to control of hazardous conditions, preventable disease, metabolic disorders. House Bill 645 by Representative Gravely of the 67th, Smyre of the 135th, Powell of the 32nd, Hatchet of the, 100, of the 50th, Workheiser of the 157th, and others, a bill relating to access to medical cannabis. House Resolution 220 by Representative Houston of the 170th, a resolution honoring the life of Mr. Homer C. Sumner, Sumner dedicating a road in his memory. House Resolution 221 by Representative Houston of the 170th, a resolution honoring the life of Mr. Charlie D. Rogers and dedicating a road in his memory. House Resolution 222 by Representative Anderson of the 10th, Thomas of the 21st, Carson of the 46th, Dickey of the 140th, Washburn of the 141st, and others, a resolution creating the House Study Committee on Annexation. House Resolution 223 by Representative Evans of the 83rd, Washburn of the 141st, Buckner of the 137th, Thomas of the 21st, Couch of the 50th, a resolution creating the Joint Study Committee on Sustainable Ma Materials Management on State Properties. House Resolution 235 by Representative Fry of the 118th, Clark of the 108th, Walensky of the 79th, Alexander of the 66th, McLaurin of the 51st, and others, resolution urging the United States Congress to pass a con constitutional amendment to establish voting as a right granted to all eligible United States citizens. Senate Bill 51 by Senator Thompson of the 14th, and a of the 31st, for Harbin of the 16th, Payne of the 54th, Robertson of the 29th, and others, a bill relating to educational programs under the Quality Basic Education Act. Senate Bill 89 by Senator Miller of the 49th, Albers of the 56th, Gooch of the 51st, Kennedy of the 18th, Anna Verta of the 31st, and others, a bill relating to elections and primaries. Senate Bill 100 by Senator Watson of the 1st, Duggan of the 30th, Kennedy of the 18th, Miller of the 49th, Al of the, of the 48th, and others, a bill relating to general provisions relative to state government. Senate Bill 119 by Senator Harper of the 7th, Goodman of the 8th, Burke of the 11th, Mullis of the 53rd, Anderson of the 24th, and others, a bill relating to permit required for burning woods, lands, marshes, or other flammable vegetation and exceptions. Senate Bill 148 by Senator Huff-Settler of the 52nd, Miller of the 49th, Butler of the 55th, Duggan of the 30th, Parent of the 42nd, and others, a bill relating to the General Assembly. Senate Bill 157 by Senator Couser of the 46th, Mullis of the 53rd, Lucas of the 26th, Butler of the 55th, Harbison of the 15th, and others, a bill relating to the Fair Business Practices Act of 1975 through second readers.
Reports of standing committees, the clerk will read. Representative Terry England of the 116th District Chairman Committee on Appropriations submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Appropriations has had on consideration the following bills and resolutions of the House. Instruct me to report the same back to the House the following recommendations. House Bill 511 do pass by committee substitute. House of Resolution 29 do pass. House of Resolution 24 do pass. House of, House of Resolution 25 do pass. House of Resolution 26 do pass. Respectfully submitted it. Representative Terry England of the 116th District Chairman. Representative Stevens, 164th District Chairman of Committee on Economic Development and Tourism, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, Committee on Economic Development and Tourism has had under consideration following resolution of the House. has instructed me to report the same back to the House the following recommendations. House Resolution 185 do pass. Respectfully submitted Representative Stevens of the 164th District Chairman. Representative Dave Belton, the 112th District. Secretary of the Committee on Education submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, the Committee on Education is that under consideration the following bill of the House has struck me to report the same back to the House following recommendations. House Bill 60 do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Dave Belton of the 112th District Secretary. Representative Jan Tankers of the 160th District Chairman on Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Local submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, the Committee on Intergovernmental Coordination Local is that under consideration following bills of the House has instructed me to report same back to the House following recommendations. House Bill 253 do pass by substitute. House Bill 535 do pass. House Bill 546 do pass. House Bill 560 do pass. House Bill 595 do pass. House Bill 600 do pass. House Bill 603 do pass. House Bill 610 do pass. House Bill 614 do pass. House Bill 445 do pass. House Bill 613 do pass. Respectfully submitted Representative Jan Tankersley, 160th District. Chairman. Representative Chuck Gustration of the 104th District Chairman of the Committee on Judiciary submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, the Committee on Judiciary has had under consideration the following bills of the House. It was instructed me to report same back to the House the following recommendations. House Bill 334 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 468 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 470 do pass. House Bill 480 do pass. House Bill 536 do pass. House Bill 553 do pass. House Bill 554 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 635 do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted. Representative Chuck Upstration of the 104th District Chairman. Representative Jane Pachetta, the 176th District Chairman on Committee on Judiciary Non Civil, submitted the following report. The Speaker, your Committee on Judiciary Non Civil has had in consideration following bills of the House and has instructed me to report the same back to the House the following recommendations. House Bill 94 do pass. House Bill 194 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 371 do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative James Burchett of the 176th District Chairman. Representative Mandy Ballinger, the 23rd District Chairman of the Committee on Juvenile Justice, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Juvenile Justice has had under consideration the following bills of the House and has instructed me to report the same back to the House following recommendations. House Bill 322 do pass. House Bill 464 do pass. House Bill 548 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Mandy Ballinger, the 23rd District Chairman. Representative Powell, the 32nd District Chairman of the Committee on Regulated Industries, submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, the Committee on Regulated Industries has that under consideration the following bill of the House has instructed me to report the same back to the House following recommendations. House Bill 544 do pass by committee substitute. Respectfully submitted, Representative Powell of the 32nd District, Chairman. Representative Rick Jaspers of the 11th District Chairman of the Committee on Transportation submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Transportation is under consideration following bills of the House. It struck me to report the same back to the House following recommendation. House Bill 577 do pass. House Bill 588 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Rick Jaspers of the 11th District, Chairman. Representative Shaw Blackman of the 146th District Chairman on Committee on Ways and Means submitted the following report. Mr. Speaker, your Committee on Ways and Means is that under consideration the following bills of the House. It's instructed me to report the same back to the House following recommendations. House Bill 32 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 302 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 477 do pass. House Bill 586 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 587 do pass by committee substitute. House Bill 593 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Representative Shaw Blackman of the 146th District Chairman. That completes the readings of the report of the standing committees.
All right, we're going on now to the local calendar. <coughs> Third reading and passage of uncontested local bills. If there is no objection, we will vote on the local calendar as a whole with a recorded vote. Hearing none, it is so ordered. The clerk will read the local calendar. <coughs> House Bill 253 by substitute by Representative Holmes, the 129th Jones County. House Bill 445 by Representative Bruce, the 61st City of South Fulton. House Bill 535 by Representative Hierdo, the 152nd City of Sylvester. House Bill 546 by Representative Stevens, the 164th City of Richmond Hill. House Bill 560 by Representative Taylor, the 173rd Thomas County. House Bill 595 by Representative Green, the 151st Clay County. House Bill 600 by Representative Dreyer, the 59th City of Hayville. House Bill 603 by Representative Meeks, the 178th Brantley County. House Bill 610 by Representative Dickey, the 140th Bibb County. House Bill 613 by Representative Blackman, the 146th City of Perry. House Bill 614 by Representative Mathiak of the 73rd Griffin Judicial Circuit. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered on the local calendar? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bills? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall these bills now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bills on the local calendar will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of the bills on the local calendar. The ayes are 154, the nays are zero. These bills, having received the requisite constitutional majority, are therefore passed. We're going on now to morning orders. Morning orders. Yesterday we didn't get to everybody, so I'm going to ask you again to be mindful. We've got uh, way, way more today than we will get to in 10 minutes, but we're going to start and get as far as we can. Chair recognizes Representative Al Williams for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It takes me 10 minutes to get up here. But um, this morning, I stand, arise from my moment in black history. Um, I've chosen, as you can see on the screen, Lieutenant Commander Ellis Woman. Ellis was a Atlanta native who in 1972, Congressman Fletcher Thompson appointed him to the Naval Academy. He was one of the first African Americans from Atlanta to be appointed to the Naval Academy. Had the pleasure of serving as Chairman Deacon with his, his mother, his father, and his sister when I lived here in Atlanta. After he came out of the Naval Academy, he became a naval aviator. He flew some of the best aircraft the Navy had. And because of that, I've asked Representative Sheila Jones and Representative Roger Bruce if they will assist in getting him in the Naval, the Aviator Museum out at Charlie Brown Airport. 
this lieutenant colonel, lieutenant commander, I'm sorry, near the end went home much too early as the good Lord sent an even better jet and flew him home to glory. And he came back and is now interned in the Marietta National Cemetery. Giant of a person, a true patriot who served his country well. God bless his memory. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes uh, representatives Gravely and Mitchell for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, today in black history, I have the great honor of recognizing the Atlanta Black Chambers, whereas the Atlanta Black Chambers of Commerce has long been recognized by the citizens of this state for the vital role that it has played in leadership and its commitment to the welfare of the citizens of Georgia. And whereas the Atlanta Black Chambers are focused on educating black business owners and consumers on the best way to understand and engage in the public policy process at the local, state, and federal level, as well as creating opportunities to empower the black community. I have the great pleasure of thanking, and I want to uh, recognize the creators and founders of Advancing Black Business Pack, uh, Marquis Mar Tate, Melvin Coleman, Calvin Maddox, and Dr. Diane Adoma. And I also want to thank Deanna Harris for allowing me to present this resolution. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Speaker, I yield the will. Chair recognizes Representative Washburn for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to give a tribute to someone relative to Black History Month. In 1984, uh, changes were made that changed the commis county commission structure in Jones County, my home county, from three countywide commissioners to a countywide chairman and four district commissioners. I ran for one of those district seats and got ele elected at the, at the age of 34. At that same time, a young man, a young Afro-American man named Lewis Patterson, who was only 27 years old, was elected as well. And I had the pleasure to serve there with Lewis during that term. We did not always agree on everything, but overall we worked together and accomplished some good things for the county that still bear fruit today. Commissioner Patterson went on to become Judge Patterson He's a municipal court judge in Jones County now and also one of the magistrate judges. He is a good man, and he has the significance of being the first Afro-American elected to the county commission in my home county of Jones. And it is my honor to recognize him today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representatives Billy Mitchell and Representative Viola Davis for a morning order. We recognize Friday, February the 26th, 2021, as City of Tucker Councilman Bill Rosenfield Day at the State Capitol to honor the life and memory of late Councilman Rosenfield during this morning order on the House floor. During his tenure in the Tucker City Council, Councilman Rosenfield was passionate about the city's development and worked diligently to improve living conditions for the residents of Smoke Rise, including resurfacing road, revamping parks and recreation areas, and renovating the Peters Park neighborhood, a historical African-American community located in the city of Tucker in DeKalb County. He was a successful businessman who advocated for small businesses in Tucker, an active member of the Tucker Rotary Club, and served on the board of directors for Tucker North Lake CID. Our city of Tucker Mayor Frank Almond stated, and I quote, his public service grew naturally out of a lifetime of private and personal service to his family, many, many friends, and countless community organization. We ask that you join with us for a moment of silence to recognize February the 26th as Councilman Bill Rosenfield Day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Chair recognizes Representative Gamble for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, today I rise to honor the life and passing of a great Georgian, Dr. Paul L. Walker. Dr. Walker's impact has touched the lives of millions of people around the world. Today, this great man will be laid to rest. He is the pastor emeritus of Mount Perrin Church of God and the former general overseer of the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee. Ephesians 4.11 says, God gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and some to be teachers, but God gave very few to be all of them. Dr. Walker was one of those few men. Please join me in a moment of silence as we honor his life and remember his wife, Carmelita, his son, Dr. Mark Walker, who is the president of Lee University, and the over 164,000 Georgians who are members of the Church of God denomination. Thank you. Chair recognizes Representative Lott for a morning order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning, colleagues. I rise today to bring your attention to the coronavirus relief package that is being debated currently in Washington, D.C. This is important and is not a partisan issue in Georgia. It affects all of our constituents. The coronavirus relief package that is being debated is a $1.9 trillion assortment of spending programs and is too large to dissect every piece from the well today. But I do need to highlight one part, that is, and that is the direct aid to the states. Please listen, all of us should be concerned. Under the CARES Act, assistance to state and local governments was distributed by population to ensure all citizens were treated equitably as we all recover from the impacts of this pandemic. But now, under the new administration and new leadership in Congress, they have devised a formula that withholds funding from st some states while rewarding others. As a matter of fact, Georgia is the number one state in the nation in terms of dollars withheld when compared to what we would be in line for under a per capita formula. New Yorkers are slated to receive 50% more assistance per person than Georgians. This ends up being almost $1.3 billion less for our state a larger differential than any other state in the union. Want to guess which state is the biggest winner? California. California, of course, which is slated to receive $5.4 billion more than its fair share would be under a per capita formula. To put this a little more bluntly, the federal government is borrowing money that our kids and grandkids will have to pay back for decades to come with the lion's share of the funds sent to bail out states like California and New York. This is unacceptable, and I hope that every member of this body, regardless of party, will publicly encourage our congressional delegation to stand up and fight for Georgians and encourage the administration and congressional leadership to abandon this formula that clearly prioritizes one set of states over others. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That concludes the time for morning orders today. We're now going on to the rules calendar. Going on to the rules calendar. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 437. House Bill 437 by Representative Howard of the 124th to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 60, Title 36 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated, relating the general provisions applicable to counties and municipal corporations so as to require attendance at self-service motor fuel establishments to dispense motor fuel to individuals with special disabilities. This bill and referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Representative Howard to present the bill.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> this is a, uh, I guess you would call it a redo bill. Uh, we, we passed this bill last year unanimously out of the House and it got caught up over in the Senate due to COVID. And it's a simple bill. And I say that re sort of reluctantly because it's not, it's a big bill to those folk who need it. And it's simply asks the service stations around the state to put up signage on their pumps to make sure that, that if a person with a disability drives up to that station, they, they will have a signage on the pump with a phone number that they can call into the station and ask for assistance if they need assistance in pumping their gas. And uh, as again, again, I say that we passed this bill last year, but for the new members who were not here, uh, hopefully you will see it as a major bill for your constituents with disabilities. Thank you and I yield for question. You do not have any questions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none, the previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none, the committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none, the report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 437. The ayes are 142, the nays are 17. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 449. House Bill 449 by Representative Smith and 133rd and others to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 9 and Title 25 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotated relating to blasting or excavating near utility facilities so as to revise the Georgia Utility Facility Protection Act. This bill having been referred to the Committee on Energy, Utilities, and Telecommunications. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Representative Vance Smith to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a code update with a couple of revisions. This is the Georgia Utility Coordinating Council. Uh, deals with underground uh, utilities, whether it be gas or electric. Uh, the 16 associations that get together, they've been meeting since June, and they've come to a conclusion that these are some of the items that need to be updated in the Georgia Code so that we make sure we continue to handle the permitting and the inspection process so that the feds won't come down and take over this. We want to make sure we're out in the front. And we've done a great job. Georgia's a leader in this category. Uh, they've also added a section where if a line is hit, such as a gas, a hazardous gas material, uh, they will call 911 and make them aware of it. Uh, we appreciate the consideration of the subcommittee and the committee, and I would certainly appreciate your consideration in this matter. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You do not have any questions. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection 
to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill. The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 449. The ayes are 160, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. The clerk will read the caption to House Bill 458. House Bill 458 by Representative Cooper, the 43rd, to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 34, Title 43 of the Official Code of Georgia Annotator relating to physicians, physicians' assistants, and others, so as to require certain training related to sexual misconduct for members of the Georgia Composite Medical Board. This bill having referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes the Chairman of the Health and Human Services Committee, Chairman Cooper, to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I bring to you today the substitute from the Health and Human Services Committee for House Bill 458. And before I start, I'd like to thank Representative Scott Holcomb for the work he's done on this issue and similar issues over the past few years. This bill was brought to me by the Medical Board because they realize that times have changed and that members really need to be updated about sexual boundaries and sexual misconduct and ex exploitation of patients. And that's what this bill does. This bill requires the board that they themselves will have to have training. It requires a minimum of three hours, a one-time minimum of three hours for physicians to be trained on this issue. And it also requires that our medical schools put this into their curriculum giving them a lot of leeway so that young physicians come out and know that times have changed. And even among the younger people, there are certain things that used to be accepted that are no longer accepted. We have to take that training here in a much smaller way, and we are not as on intimate terms with each other as you find physicians do as they go about in their daily lives. I mean, I, the other day I patted one of my colleagues on the back on, like they showed in our training, and I went, oops, you know, could that be considered a sexual advance? And then I remembered it was only if it was done on repeated basis. But you have to think about these, day, or these days. The other thing that this bill does, as the board, one of the things that they have known that they could do, and they have done, is that when a physician is being investigated from sexual misconduct, that if it rose and the investigators from the board found that they felt like it was putting patients in danger, they could suspend the license. But that was not really explicitly spelled out in their law, in the law. So this bill puts that into law. The last thing it does is it gives us a report and tells us how many people, how many doctors have been reported for sexual misconduct, how many have been found guilty in a court of law, if the, you know, the board knows that yet, but how the board handled them. Was there a private order given? Uh, and a private order might be given, like one of the things the boards did, there was an ER doctor, he treated a patient in the ER, he apparently, they later on, they dated and they got married, and he got reprimanded. Somebody turned him into the board uh, because supposedly if that's going to happen, the doctor has to send a written certified letter to the patient saying they will not going to treat them anymore. But this was an ER visit. And that doctor got sent off 
was given a private order, but what happened was he got sent off for three weeks to a special course and training session on sexual misconduct. So we will get a report of how many public orders were given, private orders, uh, was the person uh, found guilty, um, you know, and charged by law, the kind of information. So we can see where we are in the state. I would ask her your favorable consideration of House Bill 458, and uh, Mr. Speaker, if there's any questions, I will be glad to answer them or I will yield the well. You have a couple of questions if you care to yield. I'll take one or two, sir. Chair recognizes Representative Cannon to your left for a question. Does the lady yield? Yes. What is implicit bias training? I would think that that probably means that how women feel about it or men feel about what is the limits and the boundaries. I'm, I really, Representative Cannon can't be more, um, I can't really tell you more about that, sorry. Do you further yield? One more, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Representative Baysmore to your left for a question. Thank you. Does the lady yield? Yes. Thank you. If it's found that a health care provider is aware of a case of yes. sexual, sexual assault on a patient but has not reported it, what are the ramifications? Oh, thank you, Representative Baysmore, for doing that. <clears throat> if another physician knows that one of their colleagues is conducting themselves in such a manner and does not report it to the board, they can be fined, if found guilty, they can be, of not doing that, they can be fined a thousand to five thousand dollars, or if the, what they didn't report was egregious, and I would say like if they were a sports doctor, like the one that's just been reported in the news up north, and they knew another sports doctor was um, sexually assaulting all those young athletes and didn't, I would imagine, and this gives the board the right to even uh, further reprimand the physician. Thank you for those questions, and Mr. Speaker, I will yield well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 458. The ayes are 131, the nays are 27. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 338. House Bill 338 by Representative DeLoach and the 167th and others to be entitled an act to amend code section 4536 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to veterans licenses, honorary licenses, and other distinctive driver's licenses, so as revised qualifications for the issuance of veterans driver's licenses. This bill having referred to the Committee on Motor Vehicles. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Well, this is not your first bill. It's just your first bill in a lot of years. It's also the first time of somebody from that district's passed a bill in a lot of years. <laughs> Chair recognizes Representative Buddy DeLoach to present the bill. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It's nice to be back. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, uh, this bill deals with the definition of veterans 
to qualify for a veteran's driver's license in the state of Georgia. Over the years, this definition got massaged and changed and really got to the point that it got uh, so convoluted that the department decided that they would require all applicants for a veteran's driver's license to go to the VA and let them determine who was eligible. So you have to go down to the VA and that could take four or five hours to see a counselor and get your little certificate and take it back to the to uh, get your driver's license. Uh, what we've done in this bill is take the definition of veteran directly from Title 38 of the U.S. Code. It makes it very simple. So we believe when you pass this bill, then veterans can simply take their DD-214 down to the Driver's License Bureau, show them their DD-214. All they've got to do is verify your name, look in Block 13A, and if it says anything other than dishonorable, you are qualified for a veteran's driver's license. I want to thank Chairman Terry England for bringing this to my attention. Uh, he, he, one of his constituents asked him to look at this. I also want to thank uh, my colleague, Representative Al Williams. Al served this country in Vietnam and came home, frankly, to a nation that didn't care much about the veterans of his war. So Al, I want to take this opportunity to give you that greeting that we all give one another, welcome home. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, if there are no questions, I'll yield the will. You do have questions. You, you've got several, I'll... Uh, if I, if I make them quick, I know it's Friday and folks want to get out of here. No, oh, we're going to be, we're taking our time here, <laughs> Representative. <laughs> let's see. Well, let's go to your friend from the coast, uh, Representative Al Williams, to your left for a question. Yes, sir, I yield. The gentleman will yield. I, I had another question for the gentleman, but after your kind words, I changed my question. <laughs> 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 but is it not true that you were born and raised you spent most of your time and still have a business in Liberty County which gives you access to the Ralph Johnson Clinic there? That is true. And is it not true that a bill like this in an area that has as high a veteran population as we do, this certainly is a help because it can really be a deterrent to sit up there all day just to get a little form? Thank you for that question, and that's true. Uh, Liberty County happens to be the home of the premier fighting force in the world, the 3rd Infantry Division, Rock of the Marne. Oh, tell Representative Bill Hitches that again. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see what the, uh, the other Williams cousin wants to inquire about. Yeah. Chair recognizes. Up in the gallery, Representative Noel Williams for, for a question. He, he waves. Me. Well, I guess I need to call on uh, uh, th uh, this gentleman. Chair recognizes the Majority Leader of the House. To your right for a question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To my friend in the well, do you yield? I do. From a historical perspective, when you were here first, years early. How long did you, were you here before you passed your first bill? Well, I was always in the minority. I don't know that I ever got one directly, but I got a lot of amendments on there, and I spent some time down in the well talking about some I didn't like. But I don't know if I ever got, well, I probably six years. Well, you're certainly on the fast track now, I'd say. <laughs> Th thank you. I, hope to try to make a contribution. And you have, and you're still making that contribution. Gentlemen, you have for one more question? I do. Uh, I certainly, like you, honor my colleague Al Williams for his service in Vietnam, but I'd also like to mention uh, my, our other colleague who served in, in Vietnam was uh, Chairman Bill Hitchens, and we're certainly appreciative of both of them for their service to our country and their continued service to our state. Thank you, it's a great bill, and we appreciate you bringing it. And thank you for that question. 
Mr. Big Eye, yield the well. Gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. What purpose does Chairman Martin rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Isn't it true, Mr. Speaker, that I had a serious question for the gentleman about the bill? And isn't it true that what I wanted to ask him is to make sure that it covered he and the other veterans of the Revolutionary War? What purpose does Representative DeLoach rise? Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to... Parliamentary think. inquiry? Parliamentary inquiry, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, isn't it true that Chairman Don Hogan was my commanding officer in that war? <laughs> I believe that to be true, and that's why we won the war. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will uh, lock the machines. Uh, on the passage of House Bill 338, the ayes are 161, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 370. House Bill 370, Governor Representative Jones, the 47th, be titled an act to amend Article 4, Chapter 7, Title 31 of the official code of Georgia annotated relating to county and municipal hospital authorities so as to provide for term limits for members of joint hospital authorities. This bill having referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes the Speaker pro tem of the House. Representative Jones to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd uh, like to present House Bill 370. And first I'd like to say it only pertains to the Fulton DeKalb Hospital Authority, no others in the state. In 2008, when Grady Hospital was under extreme financial pressure uh, to maintain its solvency, the Fulton DeKalb Hospital Authority's role changed and was considerably reduced. And at that time, the Grady Memorial Hospital Corporation was formed to take over most of its duties to run the hospital. Um, since that time, the authorities re now receives $3 million in lease payments from the hospital, the majority of which is intended in current law to be funneled back to the hospital to pay for indigent care and to fulfill existing pension obligations but that is not happening. Um, we're hopeful that with this clarification on the hospital's role and how they are to spend their expenditures or spend the monies from the lease payment that over $1 million yearly will go back to Grady Hospital. So what the bill does, number one, is it further clarifies how those monies can be spent, most of which are already in current law. And um, it also imposes term limits very similar to the corporate boards, uh, the Fulton, uh, the Grady Hospital corporate boards term limits. And uh, with that, Mr. Speaker, I'd be happy to answer any questions. You do not have any questions. Well, thank you, and I'd appreciate your favorable consideration of House Bill 370. We have a member that wishes to be heard on the bill. The chair recognizes Representative Bennett to speak to the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, I rise in opposition to this bill because things are not always as they seem. Once again, this bill on the surface seems to enact term limits to an authority who, under local control, can set their own limits. Why this and why now? Things are not always as they seem. 
The Fulton and DeKalb Authority is the only entity, as Madam Speaker Pro Tem has offered, affected by this bill. Although not mentioned by name in the bill, things are not always as they seem. Why this and why now? The Fulton and DeKalb Hospital Authority is by statute in place and entered into a lessor leasee agreement with the Grady Hospital Corporation. And any operational agreements can be worked out administratively. Why this bill and why now? Because things are not always as they seem. So today, my colleagues, I stand here in opposition to this bill, having notified the author and had conversations with the signers on this bill, because I believe that this agreement can be worked out and continue to be given to local control. Because this is an attempt likened to taking away local rule from an authority when this can be done administratively and upon agreement of both parties working together. So again, colleagues, this bill is targeted specifically at individuals and once again takes away local control. So I ask that if you are in favor of local control, that you vote no against House Bill 370 because it sets a precedence that exists in no other hospital authority in our state. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I do yield the well. You yield for questions? No, Mr. Speaker, I yield the well. Lady has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 370 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. What purpose does the speaker pro tem rise? Parliamentary State inquiry. your inquiry. Is it not true that I was asked by current board members of the corporate board and of the authority to make this change and that they are similar to the term limits in place for the corporate board as well as several other boards in the state, including the Athens Authority. If the lady states that to be true, then I have, I know her to be a person of credibility and integrity. Uh, what purpose does Representative Cannon rise? Parliamentary state inquiry. your inquiry. Is it not true that there are other members of this Fulton DeKalb Hospital Authority who say that they fear what is at the center of this bill is an effort to undermine their work? I, I have no way of knowing if that's true or not. I'm sure the lady believes it to be true. What purpose does Representative Bennett rise? Parliamentary State inquiry. your inquiry. Speaker, is it not true that there are also members on the hospital of the full to the cab hospital authority that has spoken to me personally and have said that they are in opposition to such a move? I'm sure the lady believes that to be true. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? Uh, what purpose does Chairman Houston rise? Parliamentary State inquiry. your inquiry. Is it not true if this body had not stepped in in 2008 with the assistance of Representative Pam Stevenson, Grady Hospital would be in deep trouble? I believe that to be true. Thank you. Have all members now voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 370. The ayes are 105, the nays are 59. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 336. House Bill 336 by Representative Corbett of the 174th to be titled an act to amend chapter 23 of title two of the fiscal to Georgia and Tata relating to hemp farming so as to provide for compliance with federal laws and regulations. This bill has been referred to the Committee on Agriculture and Consumer Affairs. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Chairman Corbett to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members of the House, I bring before you HB 336 LC 441689S, 
over the past couple of years, we've passed legislation dealing with hemp farming in Georgia. Uh, what House Bill 336 does, we, we clarify what the definition of processing is in the bill. We're aligning Georgia's uh, language in our bill with some federal language that they uh, have in, in the federal rules and regs. They finally uh, got out this past year. Uh, we're clarifying the uh, background and fingerprinting process, uh, and, and we lowered the renewal fee. It was going to 50000 a year. We, we lowered it to 25, the way that in the old bill was uh, original set up, and uh, we raised a surety bond for the processors from 100,000 to 300,000 in this bill, Mr. Speaker. And that's, that's what we're doing, and I'll stand for any questions, if there are any, Mr. Speaker. You have a couple of questions, and do you yield? I yield for a couple. Chair recognizes Representative Wilson in the gallery to your right for a question. Will the gentleman yield? Tell my friend I will. Is it not true that uh, you made some changes to this bill in committee listening to some complaints from small farmers and consumer advocates to make this a better bill? A absolutely. We had quite a uh, good debate in, in the Ag Committee the other day, and with Chairman Dickey did a great job with that committee, and, and with, with the input that we got, we did make changes to the bill in committee, and I appreciate your input as well. I appreciate your help. You yield for another question or two? Uh, I will take one more, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes uh, Chairman Setzler to your right for a question. Does Jimmy yield? Uh, yes, uh, to my friend. Appreciate your efforts on this. I know a couple of years ago we had a kind of a little trip trip up where we were inadvertently created conditions where solicitors couldn't bring uh, marijuana prosecutions because of the confusion with code section. Has that issue been fixed? Previously, or does this, this bill fix that? Well, it, with much debate last year uh, between the uh, Prosecuting Attorneys Council and GBI and everything, this is what we came up with. They, uh, is a test that is out there that is available now to the uh, law enforcement. It's sort of like the, the test they have for, for marijuana. It, it will contest it to tell if it, it is positive. This will tell you if it's one percent or less so they have a test out there available to them uh that they have that will do this so, so this bill doesn't affect that we already have no, that ability and this the, is the yeah the abilities out there now uh for they have a, a test where they can, can carry around the car it's not as as quite as cheap as the uh one that can tell if it's marijuana but this will get it down and tell you if it's less than one percent it, it won't tell you if it's less than 0.3 but if it's less than one it's, it's not marijuana anyway so, so just for members that uh, that are concerned about the subject matter, this bill has been vetted and does not affect that in any way, correct? No, no, it does not affect that in any way at all, no, sir. Thanks, sir. Mr. Speaker, I yield the well and ask for your favorable consideration. Gentlemen, has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. What purpose does Representative Lewis Ward rise? It's all, it's all. Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Is it not true that I supported this measure in committee and after having an aha moment, um, I realized that it does not help the small farmers um, to sell their products to the market causing them to rely on their producers. If the lady so states, I, I guess that's true. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machines on the passage of House Bill 336. The ayes are 153. The nays are 12. This bill having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 152. 
House Bill 152 by Representative Weedauer, the 119th, be entitled an act to amend Part 1A of Article 7 of Chapter 3 of Title 20 of the Official Code of George Annotator relating non public post secondary education institutions so as to revise provisions regarding the exemption applicable to certain institutions operating on military installations. This bill having been referred to the Committee on Higher Education, that committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Representative Weedauer to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and colleagues. I bring you uh, House Bill 152. It is a department bill for the non-public post-secondary education commission. Uh, this bill does simply three things uh, to hopefully make the department a little more efficient. One, there are some of these education services on military bases that are uh, looked over by the federal government. This would bring them out from, uh, out from underneath the state umbrella and let the feds uh, continue to monitor them separately. Second thing it does, it allows the director some leeway in reviewing these institutions remotely. Uh, there's hundreds of these across the state and with a very small department, this would save the state money and time. The last thing it does is it adds two tiers to the bond requirements for these institutions to ensure the students at these schools are protected. And that is what it does. I consider. Uh, Look for your favorable consideration. I'll yield for questions. You do not have any questions. I yield the will. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of House Bill 152 will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. On the passage of House Bill 152, the ayes are 165, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 271. House Bill 271 by Representative Reeves, the 34th and others be titled an act to amend Article 2 of Chapter 11 of Title 31 of the Fiscal Code of George Antetor relating to licenses for emergency medical services so as to authorize the Department of Community Health to assess one or more provider matching payments on ambulance services. This bill having referred to the Committee on Health and Human Services. That committee recommends that this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Representative Reeves to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, this is a pretty simple bill that simply creates some ambulance parity. Right now in Georgia, there's essentially three types of ambulances or ambulance services. There's hospital, there's public, and there's private ambulance services. Private ambulance services are not currently able to draw down on federal matching funds because the federal law requires that we have language in our code, which is what House Bill 271 is, so that private hospitals can pay into the indigent care fund. Federal, um, the federal government will match those funds two to one, and then those funds can be um, redistributed. So uh, this creates parity, and it helps our private hospitals, or private ambulances. I'll be happy to yield for any questions. You have a couple of questions if you care to yield. Sure, I'll yield, Mr. Speaker. Chair recognizes Chairman Hawkins to your right for a question. Does the gentleman yield? I do. Uh, is it not true that the federal government has not kept up its Medicaid reimbursement fees for some long time, and due to that, we are losing private uh, ambulance service in the state? 
That's true. And this and it, bill solves that. Do you further yield? I do. Uh, isn't it true that this bill would help save some of those companies and, and save Georgians' lives throughout this state? The gentleman knows of what he speaks. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I will yield the well. Thank you. The gentleman has yielded the well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed to vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machine. What purpose does Representative Bentley rise? Parliamentary inquiry, State Mr. your Speaker. inquiry. Mr. Speaker, is it not true that I was going to ask my seatmate about his bill relating to when ambulances break down because the ambulance that was transporting my husband to Savannah Hospital on December 30th broke down between uh, Macon and Meta, Georgia? Would this bill fix situations regarding maintenance of ambulance services across the state? Well, I will get involved on that Very issue right. if it ever breaks down again for you, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. What purpose does Chairman Allen Powell rise? He waves. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, if so, the clerk will lock the machines. On the passage of House Bill 271, the ayes are 160, the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 384. House Bill 384 by Representative Dollar of the 45th and others to be entitled an act to amend Title 40 of the Fisher Code of George Ann Taylor related to motor vehicles and traffic so as to provide for the issuance of traffic citation of a vehicle owner in lieu of the individual operating motor vehicle in certain instances. This bill I refer to the Committee on Motor Vehicles. That committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Chairman Matt Dollar to present the bill. Thank you, Speaker. Currently, uh, if a vehicle is pulled over for a vehicle infraction, that ticket has to be issued to the driver. All that House Bill 384 says is that it gives law enforcement the ability to uh, issue that citation to the owner of the vehicle if they're not driving. Um, and that's the bill, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we've, we've passed this out before. I'm happy to yield for any questions. You have a question if you care to yield. I'll yield. Chair recognizes Representative Al Williams to your left for a question. I don't yield, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> the gentleman yield. Yes, sir. I, I was wondering if you now would have the right to write a ticket to the passenger. Or I, I, I was confused because I got a ticket and was not even in the car and not on a public road. And is it not true that I was in the presence of Alice Walker before she wrote The Color Purple and a friend moved my car and I got a ticket because the friend didn't have a license but the car never got on the road. Help me with that, I want my money back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I'm sure the gentleman knows the voice he speaks. <laughs> no further questions. I yield it well. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which was favorable to the passage of the bill the chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. 
Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 384. The ayes are 133, the nays are 27. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 488. House Bill 488 by Representative Scoggins of the 14th and others, being titled Act to Amend Title 15 of the Fiscal Code of Georgia Annotated Relating to Courts, so as to provide for an increase in the minimum compensation for Chief Magistrates. This bill, having referred to the Committee on Judiciary, that committee recommends that this bill do pass. Chair recognizes Representative Scoggins to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Members, uh, today I bring to you House Bill 488. This is the same exact bill that we passed last year. It was House Bill 765 that passed out of here 142 to 25. It went over to the Senate and they changed the effective date. So it came back to us and we ran out of time. But this is a bill that would change and, and level the playing field for the constitutional officers got an uh, adjustment in their uh, minimum compensation brackets in 2019 that was brought on by Representative Knight. Uh, this would bring the magistrate judges up to that same level. Um, it also uh, deals with probate judges who also serve as magistrate judges too. Uh, there's, this bill only affects about 70 counties in the state. Most all the, uh, the magistrate judges' salaries are set by local legislation, so this only affects 70 counties, and I would ask for your favorable, favorable consideration. And I will yield for questions, Vera Jean. You do not have any questions. Thank you, sir. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill 488. The ayes are 154, the nays are 7. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Clerk will read the caption to House Bill 289. House Bill 289 by Representative Belton of the 112th and others to be entitled an act to amend Article 2, Chapter 5 of Title 40, the official code of George Ann Taylor relating the issuance, expiration, and renewals of driver's licenses. This bill having referred to the Committee on Motor Vehicles. That committee recommends this bill do pass by committee substitute. Chair recognizes Chairman Allen Powell to present the bill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and ladies and gentlemen, I ask Chairman Belton apologizes, but he's out at about 35,000 feet today, right now and asked me to handle this very simple bill. A lot of y'all know that his passion of working with things that were for to help the military, uh, what this bill does is it amends the Georgia statutes under the Georgia law that was passed in 02 that said that you had uh, to have a Class D driver's license until 18. And what this bill does, ladies and gentlemen, it provides that if you're a 17-year-old 
and you enlist in the military, that you can then have a Class D license. Very straightforward, very simple bill. And I'm sure I'd ask for your consideration, as would Chairman Belton. You do not have any questions. Is there any objection to the previous question being ordered? The chair hears none. The previous question is ordered. Is there any objection to adopting the committee substitute? The chair hears none. The committee substitute is adopted. Is there any objection to agreeing to the report of the committee, which was favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Shall this bill now pass? All those in favor of the passage of the bill will vote aye. Those opposed will vote no, and the clerk will unlock the machines. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? What purpose does Representative Montahan rise? I can't hear you. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Okay. Pursuant to uh, rule number 133, I would like to excuse myself from this vote. Gentleman has that right, and the journal will so reflect. Have all members now voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine on the passage of House Bill uh, 289. The ayes are 162. The nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. House will... Uh, we're going to take a lunch break, but let me let me tell you why you need to come back. We've got a few bills, and we have an adjournment resolution to take up after lunch. It should be ready by then, and if it makes you feel better, the state Senate's just now getting to work for the day, and they're going to be here for a while. The chair recognizes Chairman Hatchett for an announcement. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The majority caucus will meet upon recess for lunch when we recess in the Floyd Room, the Twin Towers. This house will be in recess for lunch until 1.20 p.m.